Suppose you are given a set of cities and a minimum spanning tree connecting them all together in the lowest possible uh, cost. Now let's assume that all the edges in the original graph had distinct weights. I haven't shown all the edges here. I've only shown the edges which made it into the minimum spanning tree. But there, there could be many more edges here. What would happen if any of those edges was added to the minimum spanning tree? So let's say I take an edge from the original graph which is not shown here and I added that edge to the minimal spanning tree. What would happen is that we would get a cycle because if that edge was between vertices u and v, we know that the minimum spanning tree must be connecting together all the cities, which means there must already be a path between u and v in the minimum spanning tree. So by adding this direct edge, linking them together, we would have created an alternate redundant connection between u and v. In other words, we would have created a cycle. Not only would adding any edge to the MST would create a cycle, we can also say that the weight of that edge which was added in must be larger than the weight of all the other edges which are part of the cycle. So if the weight of this edge between u and v added was w, then w must be greater than w1 and it must also be greater than w2 and if this cycle was of uh, a, a larger length, a longer length, uh, w would be greater than all of those other edges which make up the cycle and again I'm assuming here that all the edge weights are distinct. So why is this true? Why is it that any adding any edge would always create a cycle with that added edge having the highest weight? Well, suppose that added edge had a lower weight, right? Let's say, just as an example, suppose this w was 5 and w2 was 7 and w1 was let's say 3. Now by adding this edge weight 5, uh, this edge of weight 5, we created a cycle and we can see here that 7 is more than 5 so there is a more expensive edge along that cycle. So if such an edge exists then we can actually remove that edge, remove the edge of weight 7 and we would not have changed the connectivity among all the cities because removing any edge along the cycle preserves the connectivity. But by removing this edge of weight 7 after adding the edge of weight 5 we would have actually lowered the total cost of the minimum spanning tree. Now that is impossible to do if we were originally given the minimum spanning tree. So this means that if we are actually given the minimum spanning tree it should never be possible to further lower its total cost by adding an edge and then removing one of the edges along the spanning tree to, to, to deal with the cycle. So this kind of adjustment should be impossible which is why the added edge will always have the highest weight among all the edges on that cycle otherwise we get a contradiction otherwise uh, we would always be able to improve the minimum spanning tree further by removing that most expensive edge on the cycle to get a minimum spanning tree of lower cost. So we clearly want the edges on the spanning tree to have the smallest possible weights uh, in order to minimize the total cost of the spanning tree. The edges that are left out of the spanning tree are going to have higher costs which is why adding them will always create a cycle in which they themselves will be the most expensive uh, edges. So a natural algorithm that might come to our mind here is to try to construct the spanning tree by starting from the lowest cost edge and then adding each edge in increasing order of cost or weight. So I'm going to call this algorithm as a greedy algorithm because what we are doing um, here is in each step we try to add the next cheapest edge to uh, this subset of edges which is growing in number and as long as we find that adding this next cheapest edge is not going to create a cycle uh, we, we add it, we let it be there otherwise if it is creating a cycle we don't add it, we move on to the next cheapest edge. 
So by following this process, uh, we might have initially, um, you know, a bunch of vertices that are completely disconnected. And then when we add the cheapest edge, maybe the cheapest edge links together these two cities. Then the next cheapest edge might link together these two cities. Then the third cheapest edge would link together these two. The fourth cheapest edge might link together these two. Maybe the fifth cheapest edge is linking together these two cities. But since we are creating a cycle here, we are not going to add it in. We will just move on um, to the sixth um, cheapest edge, which could be between these two vertices. And so if we keep going on in this way, we will eventually consider all the edges in the graph in increasing order of weight and link together all the cities. So we will clearly get a spanning tree out of this process. The question is, is it going to be the minimum spanning tree? Now in general, if you have gone through the dynamic programming module, you would remember that the greedy strategy generally does not work. So we are proposing a greedy strategy here. It looks very intuitive, but we do need to prove that this works. Without a proof, it is extremely risky to use a greedy algorithm to solve any given problem. So the greedy strategy is one of the alternative strategies uh, to dynamic programming for building algorithms for combinatorial optimization problems. So this minimum spanning tree problem is also a combinatorial optimization problem because uh, we saw in a previous video that the total number of um, spanning trees that you could get on any given graph could be exponential in the uh, size of the graph. So there will be a combinatorial explosion if you try the naive brute force method. And so what we want to do is to solve this optimization problem in a much more efficient way. The other thing to note about this problem is something called optimal substructure. What does optimal substructure mean? If we consider the minimum spanning tree, let's say this is the minimum spanning tree, and if we focus on a particular local region of it, so let's focus on this region which has these four vertices. If it was possible to improve the connectivity between these four cities by linking together or readjusting the edges among them in a different way, that kind of local improvement would also result in a global improvement. So for example, let's say uh, this edge was of weight 5, this was of weight 6, this was of weight 7, and let's say um, there was a way to link together uh, these two with a weight of 1 and these two with a weight of 2. Uh, in that case, we could have linked together these four cities in a different way. We could have used this edge, we could have used this edge, and we could have used this edge. And by replacing the original set of edges with these three green edges, we would have improved the local connectivity between these four cities. And by doing so, we would have actually ended up improving the entire spanning tree. We would have reduced the cost of the entire spanning tree, which should be impossible if we were already given the minimum spanning tree to start with. So the upshot of this is that if you are given an optimal solution, any uh, local region of that optimal solution for the minimum spanning tree problem is also going to be optimal in itself. It should be already optimal in itself because if it wasn't, if it was possible to further improve it locally, then that local improvement would actually result in a global improvement, which we know is impossible. And so for greedy algorithms also, we have uh, some kind of optimal substructure. Uh, this is something we already saw in dynamic programming as well. Even in dynamic programming, we require optimal substructure for uh, uh, the algorithm to work correctly on combinatorial optimization problems. But even when we use uh, greedy algorithms, uh, there's going to be optimal substructure. Anyway, so let's try to understand why this algorithm might work correctly. Remember, without a proof of correctness, um, you, you cannot trust any greedy algorithm because the greedy strategy often fails. 
so let's say that um, I followed this particular greedy algorithm at each step I chose the cheapest possible edge among the ones that remained and I got a sequence of edges so let's say my sequence was basically um, the edges m1 m2 m3 up to you know mn minus 1 so maybe uh, this edge for example had a weight of 1 this edge had a weight of 2 this edge had a weight of 4 and so on and this edge maybe had a weight of uh, I don't know 350 or something so I considered edges in increasing order of weight and as long as they were not creating a cycle I added them to this um, to this growing structure so the structure would have grown like this initially I would have a bunch of disconnected um, um, uh, sections of the minimum sp uh, of the spanning tree and then um, these would start getting linked together over time until finally I end up with a structure that links together all the vertices. Now I'm going to uh, try to give a proof by contradiction. I'm going to assume that following this algorithm did not result in a minimum spanning tree and let's see what happens uh, if that's the case. So, so I'm going to assume that I have a friend who comes to me and tells me that my algorithm is incorrect and that he has a better in fact he has the best possible spanning tree he has the minimum spanning tree um, uh, which has been constructed and that my spanning tree which I built from this algorithm using this algorithm is wrong so I'm going to take his um, edges and I'm going to pretend that I've sorted them and his edges are what I'm going to call as h1, h2, h3. I know that they have to be exactly n minus 1 in number as well because both of us claim that we have uh, you know the minimum spanning tree and any spanning tree should have n minus 1 edges. So I have sorted his edges in increasing order of weight and I line them up like this. Now I want to find out where exactly is the first position where my edge differs from his edge. So let's say it's at this position at m sub i at the ith position where I chose an edge of weight let's say 10 and he chose an edge of some other weight. Now I, this weight could have been um, more than my weight or it could have been less than my weight both of these possibilities are there but we didn't choose the same edge but everywhere before this I'm assuming that the edges match so basically uh, if I pick the smallest weight edge in my spanning tree and I ask is this edge in your spanning tree his answer is yes so there's a match here then I look at the uh, second smallest edge in my spanning tree and I ask is this edge in your spanning tree and he says yes so if I sort all the edges in his spanning tree I can compare my edges in sequence with his edges in increasing order of weight and identify the first place where um, I picked an edge which was different from the edge that he picked and of course there must be a point of difference if our trees are not the same and remember he is claiming that his tree is the minimum spanning tree right so this is the he's claiming this is the uh, the spanning tree with the lowest cost so let's look at both of these options suppose uh, let's say I consider this first let's call this as case 2 this is case 1 so suppose I notice that I picked this edge of weight 10 and I notice that um, the next cheapest edge in his spanning tree is not of weight 10 but of weight something that is less than 10 so let's say this is an edge of weight 8 is that possible now I don't know what algorithm he used it's not necessary that he is using the same greedy algorithm in fact 
um, he might be arguing with me that my algorithm is wrong it's not going to give me the uh, the minimum spanning tree while his does so let's see what happens if I picked this edge of weight 10 um, and in his spanning tree the next most expensive edge is of weight 8 and so far there has been a match between all our edges what does that mean since I was considering the edges in increasing order of weight I would have looked at this edge of weight 8 in the original graph and I chose not to include it right I chose not to include it why did I choose not to include it it must have been so because this edge of weight 8 when added to my uh, growing structure was creating a cycle that's the only reason why I would have omitted this edge uh, this edge of weight 8 so that means before this point before I came to this edge of uh, weight 10 had I tried to add this edge of weight 8 it would have created a cycle with some of the edges in this red zone and that's why I didn't add that edge of weight 8 but if it had created a cycle with some of these edges in the red zone here because these edges exactly match corresponding edges in his uh, spanning tree this edge of weight 8 must also be creating a cycle with some of the edges in in his spanning tree but that is impossible because a spanning tree cannot have any cycles by adding this edge of weight 8 not only does he not have the best spanning tree he in fact does not have even a tree because there is a cycle in his structure so he's really fooling me if he's claiming to have the best uh, spanning tree or the min cost spanning tree so this is not possible this is impossible because if it happened it would result in uh, a contradiction so let's look at case one maybe uh, it happens that I picked an edge of weight 10 at the first point of difference and his edge weight was something more than 10 maybe it was let's say 12 okay so let's say it was 12 is that possible so up to this point we are saying that for all lower cost edges than this my edges and his edges exactly match his algorithm might be different he may not have added the edges in the same order that I did but it doesn't matter because I ended up sorting his edges in increasing order of weight and I'm just looking at his edge uh, his edges in increasing order of weights so when I do that I find that my edge the, the, the first point of difference was when I picked this edge of weight 10 and he picked or, or the cor corresponding edge in his spanning tree has weight 12 so let me ask this question what hap what would happen what would happen if I added the edge with weight 10 to his minimum spanning tree well clearly because this edge was missing from his uh, minimum spanning tree adding this edge is, is going to create a cycle and if he really has an MST with him this edge of weight 10 is going to be the highest weight edge along that cycle so by adding this edge of weight 10 in his MST we would get a cycle and every single edge along this cycle must have a weight of less than 10 right we've seen this earlier on that whenever we add an edge which is not part of the minimum spanning tree to the MST that edge is going to create a cycle and moreover it's going to be the most expensive edge along that cycle so that means all the other edges which which belong to his MST must have a weight of less than 10 but if that is the case then all those edges if you look at their positions uh, over here in this list all of those edges would have a weight less than 10 
so they should appear they should appear in this in this green oval inside this green oval right in this in this zone on the left because those are precisely the edges with the smallest possible weights and they should all lie to the left of to the left of my edge of weight 10 so that means all of these edges belong to the set of edges from h1 to hi minus 1 because hi onwards the edge weights are all more than 10 but if they lie in this set because this set of edges is exactly identical to the set of edges from m1 to mi minus 1 the edge this edge of weight 10 must be creating a cycle with these edges of of my minimum spanning tree but that is impossible because the algorithm that i'm following is not going to insert this edge of weight 10 if it is going to create a cycle with the edges that i've already added so how is it possible that this edge of weight 10 can create a cycle with uh, with these edges in other words it's not possible that this edge of weight 10 could create a cycle with these edges h1 to hi minus 1 and that means it's not possible for this edge of weight 10 to create a cycle in his minimum spanning tree with um, edges whose weights are all less than 10 but if what he had was a minimum spanning tree that must happen so that means we are again at a contradiction his claim to have a minimum spanning tree has actually been rebutted it is impossible for him to claim that he has the best possible spanning tree because even in case one if he did have the best possible spanning tree we can actually prove we did already prove that we run into a contradiction so this proof might look a little complicated uh, many of the proofs for greedy algorithms are not exactly simple but hopefully this makes the point that this particular greedy strategy that we are following is going to um, lead us to a correct algorithm why because if it didn't then we could take the best possible solution the minimal spanning tree and look at the first point of difference between the, the the tree that my algorithm constructs and the best possible MST and show that any difference between them is going to lead to a contradiction which means there cannot be any difference between what my algorithm gave me and the minimum spanning tree so this greedy algorithm works correctly and it goes by the name of Kruskal's algorithm and in the next video we will see how to implement this algorithm want to become a software engineer at google you can like thousands of our students you just need to learn from those who've already cleared fang interviews at interview kickstart our interview prep courses are developed and taught live by 150 plus instructors from tier one companies like google and facebook our courses are tailored to help you crack software engineering domain interviews, including back-end, full-stack, machine learning, embedded systems, data science, and more. To learn more, book your free webinar slot today.